Today, we bring you Al Mooney's famous Culver Cadet. Today, we're visiting with Neil LaFrance and his Culver Cadet that is not a Culver Cadet. Neil, welcome to Aviation Theater. Thank you, Captain Fred. I uh, appreciate being on your program. And uh, as you said, this is a cadet. A Culver Cadet. Yes, we, we call it a cadet, but actually it's a replica. Culver Cadet. Okay, you let the secret out of the bag. I was going to hold that uh, a little bit. I, I thought I would beat you to the punch okay. there, you see. Well, let's talk a little bit about the performance of this Culver Cadet replica. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. It's a modern Culver Cadet that you designed and built yourself. Yes. Now, this is after a, the replica is after the design that Al Mooney built or designed back in 1939. This airplane is uh, a 60-year-old replica of the airplane he designed. They built 368 in Wichita, Kansas. The uh, airplane was in such demand back in those years that uh, they couldn't produce enough of them. Uh, now, as far as the performance. Okay, let, let me take it from there. Sure. Uh, you taxi out to the runway. Yes. And you get clearance from the tower to take off. That's correct. What kind of a takeoff roll would it have? Uh, you advance the power, and the airplane will roll approximately 500 feet. And at what speed would you rotate? And it'll rotate at approximately uh, 80 miles an hour. That's really what we want to see on the airspeed. Anything less than that, why you can't rotate very well. And what kind of a climb out ratio would you have? Well, I, I had your your cohort in the airplane, and I showed her a thousand foot a minute. We were climbing a thousand foot a minute with we, two people. With two people, and uh, we had uh, at least two thousand foot before we made our our turn to our downwind. So it is, a, it is a really good performing airplane. Yes. Then you, you level off, you put it on the step, and what speed would you cruise at? We normally climb out at 80, but we cruise at 130 miles an hour. Excuse me, I thought you said 130. 130, yes. One, three, Captain zero. Fred, 130 miles an hour, that's correct. Wow, that's fast. It is very fast for an airplane that's 60 years old. What, uh, what horsepower do you have? We have 100 horsepower. It only has 100 horsepower, and the engine is a Continental 0200, and it's, and it's the same engine that's in the Cessna 150 airplanes. And how much gas does it drink an hour? That is the, that is the good part about it. This airplane would only consume 5.5 gallons an hour at 130 miles an hour. 130 miles an hour? Yes. Five and a half gallons yes. of gas. Get a load of this though. Top speed, full throttle, 140. Can wow. you imagine that two people, baggage, full 20 gallons of fuel? Um, now there's reasons that we can do this. Well, before we go to that, uh, what kind of propeller do you have on here? Okay, that propeller is the same propeller as used on the Cessna 150s. So the engine and the propeller are matched? They are matched. They are a certified combination. And I assume the spinner too? The spinner is also a 150. So uh, it's a high performance airplane. High performance airplane. Can cruise at 140. Yes. Usually cruises at 130. Yes. And only drinks five and a half gallons an hour. But Here's, get a load of this. It lands 
at 45 miles an hour. Get out of here. It lands at 45 miles an hour, and that uh, any novice can land the airplane at that speed. Is that right? That is correct. Well, if it lands at 40, what does it stall at? It stalls at, you can't see it on the, on the indicator, and it drops through. You add, all you do is add forward pressure on the stick, and it's flying again. Like a rocking chair. Like a rocking chair. Beautiful airplane. And I, you know, I equate this airplane a little bit to a Comanche. This is a poor man's Comanche. Yes. And it, it, uh, it's but a, faster and more economical. Well, not faster, I say, but well, a Cherokee. I was thinking economical. Of economical. Yeah. Yes, very, very. Economical. I used to have a Piper Cherokee. And it would do 124 and drink eight gallons. Yes, you had a big engine. So this is superior to a Piper Small Cherokee. Small engine. Yeah. So if you don't need to carry a, a steamer trunk and 10 suitcases, True. this is a good cross-country airplane. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it it uh, performs uh, with your modern day airplanes. It'll perform with your Pipers. It'll perform with your Cessnas. But the airplane is 60 years old. The design of the airplane. The design, the replica design. Yes. Okay. We're going to go back and talk about the history of the original Culver Cadet and compare it to this home-built uh, cadet right after we come back from this very important message. We'll be right back. back to Captain Fred's Aviation Theater. Today we're visiting with Neil LaFrance and his Culver Cadet replica. Uh, Neil, let's continue on with this particular airplane. Uh, <clears throat> is it made out of wood and fabric? This airplane originally was designed with all wood. It was a completely fabricated in wood. Al Mooney designed it that way back in the early years, uh, depression years, just before the war, because uh, steel and some of the other material, aluminums, were very hard to obtain. When you're talking of, about before World War II, yes, that was before, what, 1938, 39? 39, 1939. So he designed this all as an all-wood airplane. Over all these vast years that the airplane has been, 60 years, that the airplane has been in existence, 90% uh, of all those airplanes have rotted fuselages. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was to redesign the airplane. Uh, I was able to obtain an airplane uh, in parts, and I reversed engineered the airplane and when I did this, I made a steel tube fuselage. This is the only replica Culver Cadet that is flying with a steel tube fuselage. So the, what, what covers the steel tube fuselage? Okay, this, this airplane is constructed, as I said, of steel tube in the fuselage. Uh, the, uh, the wings are wood. The stabilizer, vertical fin, is wood. All the movable. Okay, stop just a minute. Sure. The the vertical stabilizer. The vertical stabilizer. The vertical fin yes. is wood. Yes. The horizontal stabilizer. The yes. horizontal fin That's is correct. wood. That's correct. What about the rudder and the elevator? All the control surfaces are steel tubing and fabric. And now we get to your pointed question: What is this covered with? The whole airplane is covered with a Dacron fabric specially designed for aircraft use. Which is a lifetime, supposedly, fabric. That's correct. It has a, a tautening uh, system on it and a sealant uh, over the uh, cloth, and then it's painted. You said all the control surfaces. Does that include the ailerons? It includes the ailerons, includes the elevator, includes the rudder. And the fuselage is steel tube, remember. Mm -hmm. So the fuselage is tube and fabric? Yes, the, the basic fuselage is steel tube. 
but the top deck, if you see the top deck, it has stringers on it. Those are wood stringers, and they're formed by a formers to give it its contour. What about the leading edge? Now, the leading edge of the wing is wood. The main spars are wood. They're I-beam construction. Now, uh, you've got to remember, 60 years ago, Al Mooney designed a cantilevered wing airplane. This airplane has what they call a cantilever wing. Mm -hmm. uh, Cessna airplanes are supported, the wings are supported by a strut. Yes. Well, this would be like the air coupe. The air coupe uh, had a cantilever wing. The air coupe has a cantilever wing. Now, what this does for the airplane, it reduces the drag. The overall drag of the airplane is reduced tremendously by, with a cantilever wing. Let's talk about the wing for just a minute. The wing on an air coupe is what they call the old paddle wheel That's right. uh, wing. That's right. Uh, looking at this wing, it, it looks like uh, the wing of an RAF a Spitfire in World War II. Absolutely. Remember, this airplane was designed in 1939, and, of course, the Spitfires, uh, Hawker Hurricanes, had elliptical wing. So what did Al Mooney do? He put elliptical wing and a tail surface on it. What is the advantage of an elliptical wing? Principally, it's a very low drag. Uh, here again, we want a fast airplane, so we we make it a low drag. Surface. That's why you get 140 miles. That an hour. is exactly mm -hmm. right. That is, we do some other things. We do some things with the landing gear, which you'll see later on. But essentially, it is a steel tube wood airplane, fabric covered. It lends itself to being a home built or an experimental license, if it, the FAA license requirements for experimental home build uh, is met by this airplane. So we can take a set of plans and build this. You can build it in the garage. That's where I built this one, in a garage. We'll continue right after we come back from this very important message. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Captain Fred's Aviation Theater. Today we're visiting with Neil LaFrance and his Culver Cadet replica. Neil, there's one other uh, control surface I forgot to ask you about, and that's the trim tab. Yes, sir. And that is on the rear of the elevator. And that little trim tab is awfully small, but a very effective. The trim tab is run by a Ford crank. Remember the reel-up windows on the old Ford? Model A Ford. Model A Ford. It has a little crank up there. That I have turn. a Model A Ford, and I, I know the window cranks. The, yes, that's what it uses on there. Okay, it... Actually, what that little trim tab does is position the elevator to balance the airplane in flight. If we use fuel, of course, nose wants to go down, so you use a little trim tab to run the elevator up, and that raises the nose. Okay. I notice you have a strobe light here. That means it has an electrical system. So let's segue inside to the cabin of the airplane. Very good. Uh, tell our viewers about the instrument panel. The instrument panel on this airplane is, uh, is a standard, what you would find in the modern-day airplane. The old original airplane had a wood panel, and it had minimal instruments in it. This airplane is equipped with all the modern day instruments, radios, and we can take a look at that and see. Well, what... let's guide our viewers to your panel. Okay. Uh, first of all, you have the regular stuff, like you have uh, an altimeter, That's correct. an airspeed indicator, That's correct. a compass. That's correct. Uh, but on this airplane, you have a GPS. Yes. And you have uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, an exhaust temperature, and what else? Well, as I said, the instruments are separated as modern-day airplanes. On the left-hand side, we have all the flight instruments. Altimeter, airspeed, gyros, and so forth are on the left-hand side. That allows the pilot to fly the airplane. 
on the right hand side of the throttle and the push pull controls for the engine are the engine instruments. We have oil pressure, oil temperature, we have cylinder head temperature. There's quite a few instruments up there that the pilot has to uh, monitor in flight. Okay, in addition to the instruments, you have a very important wheel down on the floor, uh, and that tells something special about the wheels on this airplane. That is correct. We have a retractable landing gear system on this airplane. Which adds 10, 12 miles an hour. Absolutely. It adds, it adds overall airspeed to the airplane. It, add, uh, it decreases the, the uh, drag on the airplane by raising the landing gear. And we, this is manual? You crank the wheel? This is all manual. We have a little wheel that's located between the two passenger, between the pilot and the passenger. That little wheel requires two turns and the landing gear folds up. There's a little throw over lever to put it, put it in various lock positions. The, and since it's manual, you don't have to worry about having a hydraulic failure. That is absolutely right. And not only that, but if you have a pretty girl flying in the airplane with you and you happen to bump her knee, you can say, excuse me, I have to lock the gear down. Heaven forbid. <laughs> uh, in the closing minutes, you built this airplane. You designed it, you created it, you built this. That's correct. And uh, if somebody was interested in building a plane like this, you don't sell kits. No, I don't. Uh, but if they're interested, uh, they could contact you about uh, plans or, or what? Absolutely. We have a full set of plans for the airplane to build it. So if they want more information on the plane, it yes. is available. It is available. Can I say the name? Uh, the name of what? The name of Aero Systems, which we, which we sell the plans under. But, but anyway, we can say the name. We can't say the name. Thank uh, you. Tell our viewers, we have just a couple of minutes left. Tell our viewers when and how you got into flying. I started flying in 1942, and uh, it was on a CPT program. I was trying to get into the Air Force. My eyes were too bad. So I opted as, uh, as a flight line mechanic, and I spent uh, most of my uh, time in the Air Force as a uh, flight line mechanic. Now, at that time, it was the Army Air Corps, right? It was the Army Air Corps, you bet. Until October 1947. And they changed. Mm -hmm. And so how did you learn to fly? Uh, as I said, uh, during the war, uh, there was the civilian pilot training program. They were trying to get as many pilots trained as, as they could. Uh, and I enrolled in this uh, program, and uh, I learned to fly in a J-3 Cub. Oh, I see. Your eyes were good enough for a civilian pilot. Oh, license, yeah, because they could wear glasses. But not good enough for the military. Oh, yeah. That was a big I letdown. See. Big letdown. The instructor that I had was a woman, Mary Myers. I'll never forget her. They had a lot of women instructors. Poncho Barnes ran her own flying school. That's right, because all the men were in the service, right? Yeah. But Mary Myers would teach you to coordinate the controls, the rudder, the ailerons. And if you didn't, in a J-3 Cub, you sit behind the instructor. The instructor sits in front yes, of you. Yes, because you solo from the back seat. Right, but the disadvantage of that is she had access to your toes, and if you didn't do something right, she would bear down on your toes. That's a good note to finish on. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today and for sharing your Culver Cadet replica. It was very interesting. Thank you very much, Captain Fred. Hope to see you soon. As always, this is Captain Fred saying, I love airplanes, and I honor the people who fly them. And today, we've been visiting with Neil LaFrance and his Culver Cadet replica. God bless America.